Now, where are you from? Broward County, Florida. Broward County, Florida. Yep. That's a county, though. That's not an actual city within the county. So what town, city are you, are you from? I mean, like, I'm weird, like, you know, because my parents, they moved me from Merrill's Park. So I guess you would say I'm Mer from Merrill's, but I moved from Merrill's all the way across town to Margate. I went to school in Ely. I went to school in Terravella. To, to, I went to Terravella. I went to school in Pompano. So it's like I was all over the place. And honestly, I was raised in Lotta Hill. I mean, not raised, but I grew up my most of my adult life in Lotta Hill, Miami. So I just claimed Broward County, Florida, because that's where I live the most. I see. Yeah. If somebody's not familiar with Broward County, what's the closest major city they would be familiar with? Miami or Palm Beach. How far is both? Um, I'll say, like, depends on where you at, you know. Um, Roughly speaking, estimate. I'll say, like, Miami is, like, 35 to 45 minutes away. Um, and then Palm Beach is also about the same distance. So we, like, dead middle. Mm. Now, what was it like for you growing up in Broward County? Can you paint that picture for us, yeah, your upbringing? It, to be honest, it's a lot of talented folks. So, like, I was always... I was always into music, so in Broward County, you can meet a lot of different people, like, you know, who's trying to come up, and they're very, you know, they're awesome artists, and, you know, that, me me being an artist already, I was always welcome into that community. Um, it, it really depends on what type of lifestyle you live. I live in a, a totally different lifestyle, I guess, from everybody. I was one of those people that would be a hopper, I guess. You, I was friends with this clique, this clique, and this clique, so... I went to a lot of high schools, um, so my face was re well gated in a lot of different communities. So I say more so like I was always that golden, that golden child. Like so, a person will accept me for who I am, and I can walk into you know the plug door, and it's all cool. And you know, and then I walk into to to like the doctor's office, and I know the doctor. So it's like I was it, my upbringing is really different from a lot of people, but. You know, I was thank I thank God. You know, I have my parents. So my upbringing in um in, in Broward County, thank God it wasn't on the rough side. I've seen a lot of things. You know, a lot of bad things. A lot of things I won't speak about, and some things you know I just can't speak about. So it's a lot of it's a lot of tough. It's it's some tough areas. You know, as long as your face gate in Broward County, you pretty much good. You good. Now. Um not a rough upbringing for you. Nah. But you did move around, sounds yeah. like, a little bit. A lot. Why so much moving around? I was an artist. My dad really supported my music career. So, you know, yeah, he probably didn't think it was for this reason. But, yeah, it's like, like, I personally just wanted to get my name out there, you know, as a child. Like, it was different. You know, we didn't have access to, like, social media. You put up something, you, you, could, you could pop overnight. So it was more so you had to face to face with people. You had to get to know people and, and let them know, hey, this is what you're doing. So schools was the best way. You know, you have a lot of people and the word of mouth is the, the most powerful way of promotion. So I, 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 I jumped schools to get my name out there, which I really did, you know. Um, anybody who went to school with me know that. So um, it, it, personally, I mean, that's, that's, much, that's pretty much it. So your parents moved for you? They didn't move for them? No, we didn't. So we didn't never move district. So like, long story short, bro, like straight up, like I was in high school, right? And my cousin and them got into like some altercation, right? A huge altercation which caused, caused a riot in the school. I was just the center of the, the whole thing. So we were all about to get expelled from school. And... My dad is a different type of person. He's cut from a different type of cloth. So this man just has a way of speaking. And the superintendent happened to have the same last name as my father. So, eh, you know, I had a little leeway. I was able to just switch a school. And although I wasn't living in that district, I was still able to go to that school. As long as I can get there on time, they let me go to that school. And plus my music career, I was about to pop when I was younger too, you know. It was just my mindset and I became a different type of artist. So, hey, I changed up. Yeah, like they move, they move me based off of what I told them. Simple as that. Okay, so that's one occasion, but you move several times. Yeah, like um, 
like my on my by myself, like as an adult or like. Well, we're talking about the different areas. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. You lived yeah. in different areas of Broward County. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. I imagine you're in different schools also. Yes, yes. Okay, so like when I was younger, yeah, when I was younger, I did, I did move around a lot, but that was that was because my parents just wanted us to have a better lifestyle. Each each place we moved to was to better to better our our situation. So, okay. Yeah. I see. So did you grow up? Because uh, you said it wasn't rough, but it was trying to rough better neighborhoods. Yeah. Rough neighborhoods, I guess, uh, you know, so, yeah, the neighborhood was rough, but as far as, like, not my household, what was going on in my household, I didn't have no rough childhood. I ain't, my parents always tried to better that situation, so, you know, yeah, you know, fussing, fighting, lights turned off, you know, sleeping on the floor, rodents and shit like that, but other than that, you can't really help help that you know that's like some stuff is uncontrollable and you know the things they could control was to move us out of that situation to better places and better locations hopefully that changes the you know that changes the surrounding but it doesn't change the people the type of people was always going to be there well that's good that you're able to move because some people can't yeah financially they're stuck i know i was blessed with a awesome grandma my my mom's mom is very amazing. My grandpa, my grandma on my dad's side is also very amazing. They helped out a lot financially. So I was blessed. I'm blessed. And I, I never, ever, ever, you feel me? I'm never going to sit there and say I'm not, you know, like 100 percent. I know I'm blessed. Like you grew up in poverty, though. Yeah. Like I wasn't rich, you know. Um, I mean, right now I, I feel like I'm I'm. I'm good enough, you know, I'm well off, but I'm not rich yet neither. So, yeah, I wasn't rich when I was little at all. Nah, you know, we, everybody, you, it's a, it's a major struggles, the regular struggles that we all go through everyday life, you know, and, and I appreciate it more now than I ever did before because when I was younger, I didn't really understand. And now once I got my own place, I understood everything my parents did and why they did it. So Re recognizing what I'm going, what I go through now, I'm like, yeah, I, I did struggle a little bit, but it wasn't like nothing that burdened me, that changed my life in no major, major way, you know? With the struggle, what was the toughest point dealing with the struggle for you? As a, as a young, as a young adult, I would say getting into like, you know, getting into a situation where I had I got arrested, it was it was bad for me financially. It was bad for me in every way, shape, and form. I had to move out of the location I was at because of some BS. And I moved to another place which wasn't so well, so good. Like struggling is different to everybody. Mentally, I was breaking down. Social media was fucking up, fucking with me. It was a lot of stuff that caused me, but I mean, as far as struggles, like, my, my, my worst struggle happened to me two years ago, you feel me, when I ain't have nothing, nothing, I had nothing, like, I, I literally had a lot of money one day, hit rock bottom, you feel me, that was the worst struggle I ever had to go through, because my bills, I lived a lavish lifestyle, you know, I, I was making good money, so I was able to splurge on stuff, and then not having anything in, t in your bank account and you have to pay bills. Mentally, it started to break me down. I didn't have a place to live. We was homeless, not living nowhere. You know, feel me? 30 days in a car, you know? So it was like, that's the, mo the main thing is like being homeless, is not having a place and not knowing where you're going to live as an adult. That's, that's, you know, that was the major, the most, that was the craziest struggle that I've ever had to go through because I didn't know where I was going to get my next meal. And if I was going to get a next meal, I had to save every penny to move me into another place with all the stuff I had. Plus, I had to make sure I had to pay my car note because the place we were sleeping at was it was a car. You feel me? So it was like I had I had to do something. And thank God I got out of that situation. You know, I got out of that situation. And and I always kept a positive mindset throughout the whole situation. Like, the whole time I'm like, listen, you know, you're going to make this. You're going to get out of this situation. 
you're going to get the money to pay for this car note. Don't worry about it. If you stress about it, crazy thoughts go through through my mind, was going through my mind, like running through my mind. So I had to, I had to dead that, and I got out of that situation, and I'm, I'm moving forward to this day. How did you get into this situation initially? How did you lose all this money? Um, paying a lot of lawyer fees and stuff of that nature. Um, and having to prioritize, you know, it's like who, what you want to do today. So if you, if you, if you going, if you like, I want to say numbers and shit like that, but like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be lying and not giving y'all accurate numbers and stuff. So like, it's like, I lost a lot of money because of lawyer fees, lawyer fees, going to court, court fees and trying to get rid of this case. And that plus on top of that, having to pay for both me and my, my girl to live, you feel me? So that that was mainly what it what it was all it, what it all boiled down to, you feel me? Is that case over with? Oh yeah. I beat it. What beat was what were you charged with? I don't wanna say cause then people might <laughs> might think it's some crazy shit, but it was all right, listen, so before I say it, it don't have nothing to do with like relationship and shit. It was domestic violence on some on some family drama type shit. You feel me? And being in that one situation caused me never to want to go to jail because of how that whole situation, how how they handle you as a inmate or a prisoner, because that's what they call you no matter what. If you're going to just fucking hold and sell, you feel me? It says prisoner. So this shit is it's a crazy situation, but Overall, yes, some domestic violence shit. Mm. All lies. Though. How much time did you have to spend in, in county jail? Not long. Um, not long at all. My my people's bonding me out. My girl bonded me out. Thank God, I had the funds. Mm. And ain't no go to bail's bombing. Nah, put up on. <laughs> now you living in a car. How are you? Uh, just like hygiene. How are you, I mean, when do you take a shower? How do you take a shower? My uncle's house. Oh, okay. Yeah, my, my little cousin, straight up, LHB Mafia, my little cousin, man. Yeah, yeah, like I was, we were sleeping outside this man, in, in this man's um parking lot, you know, my uncle and them didn't have the space and it was like a weird situation there. So we couldn't stay inside, but we had a place where the car could park. Ah. Yeah, so we'll take a shower in there. Because I was going to ask, you know, if you relied on friends or relatives. Because some people, when they become in a homeless situation, they have an ego. And that's the last kind of, they could use that, that play, but they choose not to. Yeah. And it could be, you know, part of that downfall during that homeless uh, circumstance. To but, be real, I didn't go to like my, I didn't go to my parents or nothing. Like I didn't go to my grandma. I could have went to all these people's house. We legit could have had a place to lay our heads. So... You're right. It it in some sort it was like an ego thing. Me and my cousin were like this, and we're still like this to this day. You know, so it's like I I'm just he I let him in in that situation. Like not everybody knew about it. It was just like you just now everybody knows now. But it was just only four people that knew. It was me, my girl, my little cousin, and my baby brother. And hell no, I wasn't asking for anybody, any help from nobody. I wasn't going to say, please put the funds up for me a place. I had to get it myself. It's all about getting it yourself, especially at the age I was. I was like, man, I got to get this shit myself. Ever had thoughts on, because you did say you tried to keep the stress level down, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Did you ever have a feeling like crashing out? Like? Maybe suicide, maybe... Some sort of depression. Did hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Like, I mean, anyone who say that that, that thought didn't come past their mind in a situation like that would would be lying. So yeah, hell yeah. Like, dude, it was some nights that I would just stare at myself and don't know why I'm crying and I'm crying. Like, what the fuck's going on? You know. So it's like, yeah, I've had the thoughts, but as as soon as I had the thought, it was take two steps back. Hold up, you got this. You got this. You got this. So either you're going to say you're not going to do your music, you're not going to work on your music career, you're not going to keep the job that you have, you're not going to make the money you want to make. It's only this, but this little bit of time that I was going to go through that situation. Now, it's other people that go through it for years, 
years and I commend them. I went through it for 31 days, like literally the month of January. You feel me? The whole month. So, yeah, I definitely had the thoughts, though. So what was the turning point? How did you get out of the homelessness situation? I know this shit going to sound like, damn, bro, this girl is blessed. You know what I'm saying? But like on some G shit, I was working for a company at the at the time and they had a contest in Mexico and I was invited to go to Mexico and it was like perform. You, It was like a talent show type gig. You know, the winner won five thousand dollars straight up. So I was like, man, I got to do this contest. I have to enter into this contest. I got to I got to I got to get this. I got I got to make this shit happen. So I went into I went into the contest knowing that I'm going to win. No matter what, I'm going to win this fucking contest. I met up with my DJ at the time and we did, you know, some remixes to some like popping at popping songs, but all about the company. And I went on stage straight up and won five thousand dollars they just gave me that shit and i split split that shit 50 percent gave that man 50 50 percent of what i won twenty five hundred dollars and that is exactly how i got out of that situation i prayed to god and i got out of that shit this happened in mexico yeah mexico mexico five thousand usd or five thousand pesos oh, no five thousand usd it's not yeah. that much that nothing <laughs> nah usd Wow, that's that's a very um, a very unique way of uh, turning things around. Yeah. Going going uh, through this whole uh, homeless scenario, what did it teach you? Never to give up, and when when shit hits the fan, when it is the absolute worst, that's the one time. You truly have to be negative. And, you know, I always heard, you know, be positive, be positive, be positive. Everybody preaches that. You know, everybody preaches that. But to be honest with you, negative energy attracts positive energy. So in that situation, when everything is negative, a little bit of positivity can make shit literally spread like cancer and you could just that whole negative situation can go with one positive statement and believe in that shit was going to actually you know happen whatever you believe in at that time like you know you speak that shit into existence and believe that shit and i promise you it will work but you have to believe it and that's what i learned you know i learned that and i'm, I'm living by that shit today somebody watching this and before I even ask this question, when all this was happening, how old were you at the time when this scenario happened? I was like 18, no, 20, 18 or 20, I don't remember. Oh, okay, somewhere around there. Yeah. Okay, so somebody watching this, maybe about to be homeless or uh, trying to get out of homelessness. Do you have any, and circumstances could be different for everybody, but do you have any general advice for either or situation do you have a, any general advice for somebody about to be homeless or do you have any advice for somebody uh, getting out of being homeless any general advice here general either advice. or yeah. um see how many friends you lose see how many people you call your friends see how many friends you lose and during that situation you're going to see the true friends that you really truly have and rely on them to help you through it mentally. If they're gonna help you, you know, with money, however they're gonna help you, you're gonna see who your true friends is when this situation, whenever, you know, whenever it goes down. And keep your head up, you know, don't don't just don't feel like the world's about to fall on you, like something's about to happen. Like I told you, stay positive throughout the whole situation. <laughs> and like straight up like you'll see who your true friends is during this they, they'll help you out if they there for you or your true family you lose a lot of people during situations like that how many people you think you lost oh I lost I lost a lot of I lost a lot of friends over dumb shit too but yeah like I lost a lot of friends over that a lot of friendships a lot of relationships with some of my family that I really thought were close to me at that time, I lost a lot of people. I probably, if I give you a number, 
close to about 15 people. You said you beat the case. Yeah. It was a domestic violence issue with within family. Yeah. Uh, where are you at today with those family members? Has it stuff been rectified and resolved or? Yeah, uh, somewhat. Like, I'm very family oriented, so like, shit like that. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not gonna let your negative vibes and what you say about me let you ruin what I got going on. I know you gotta, you have to forgive in this world, man. If you wanna keep moving forward, you gotta forgive. And you cannot, you, can, you could always remember, you know, don't forget, but forgive. So I forgave them for that whole situation. It was crazy, crazy. And what I do right now for them is crazy. You wouldn't even be like, you wouldn't be like, you'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> now, what about school? What kind of kid were you in class growing up? Generally speaking. Um, like I was a, <laughs> I was sneaky. I was a sneaky kid. Let's say that I'll get in trouble and then I'll also be on the side where, oh, I'm innocent. So good, bad, I was sneaky. How many school, different schools did you attend? Elementary, middle, high school, how many? I did. Because um, it sounds like you moved around, so. Yeah, two, two, two elementary schools. I, was, I went to three middle schools, and I went to three high schools. That can get lonely. No, nah, hell no. Nah. No, nah, that's why I said I lost a lot of friends. Don't get don't get me wrong. Like, I got a lot more friends, but nah, not not lonely at all. Especially if you can build relationships. I'm an Aquarius. I'm a love baby. Everybody loves me. Not every kid can handle all that all that shaking and and baking. I know, but you know, stick and move. I got to stick and move. <laughs> and then you got to be the new kid when you enter the grade or the school. I don't know how it is in other states or like other cities, but or counties. But in Broward County, boy, you move schools and you the new kid. You the most popular thing happening. Oh, for real, like especially if you move mid year, you brand new and nobody else in the school is new. You the only new face. Everybody wants to know who you are, especially you know. You look like this. <laughs> <laughs> You look like this since elementary school? I look, look, I was a cute <laughs> one. I was cute. I mean, elementary, I was ugly, man. I was ugly as hell. Ugly duckling grew up, though, so, yeah, now I'm like, I'm, I'm very, I'm different. But before, I was very, very beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it was one of them babies, you know? What was that baby? I date me. Speaking of dating, um, you mentioned earlier in this interview that you had a girl, yeah. a girlfriend. Yeah. So sexually, uh, what category are you in? Dominant. I'm the, I guess, the stud, the dyke. I'm no label though. But I'm the dominant one. Bisexual, both yeah. sexes. Oh, hell same hell sex. Not. Same sex. You know, same sex. Yeah, same sex. It's just. I like girls. I like girls that like girls. I like girls that like girls. When did you start to have these feelings? What age or what grade? Since I was five years old, it was com it was suppressed. But since I was five, I like I guess I like girls doing things with girls I shouldn't be doing at that age. But mm. um, when I first dated my first girlfriend, was like seventeen. First had my first girlfriend. Family okay with it? Oh, hell no, nah, they wasn't okay with it. At first, now they are. I it, guess. Explain how everything unfolded. Explain, uh, did you tell them? Did they find out? How did, because you said these were suppressed feelings. Yeah, so, okay. I, I, had, a, I had a little boyfriend. And, you know, throughout, throughout school, you know, people would tell me, hey, you know, you, you like girls, you like girls, or you're going to be gay. I swear you're going to be gay. And I'd be like, Girl, I'm never going to be gay. To be honest, I really, it was just people talking it into my head all the time. But I ended up talking to this young chick on the phone every day. She telling me she liked me. I'm like, 
girl, don't tell me that. So I hung up. Boom. She called me back. We on the phone, and I'm like, I'm like, you know, I like you too, but if you tell anybody, I promise to God I'm going to kill you. All right. Went from that. She was a dancer for my music uh, at the time for the artist that I was for a video that we were about to shoot. She was a dancer, and I used to watch her dance, and it just like, I was like falling in lust with this girl. And for, from her telling me she liked me, I guess that played over and over in my head, and I started having thoughts, having feelings. And long story short, I ended up dating her on one day. Went to a party the next day I had a show. And um, I met another girl, and that became my girlfriend. I moved her into the crib. My parents see some shit on Facebook they didn't like. <laughs> like, this shit going on up under my roof. I'm like, you know, they come up to me and they're like, you got to get out. Your girl got to get out. That gay shit is not going on under my roof. And I was like, oh, oh my goodness, I love her. I, she can't just leave. So we ended up getting kicked out, went to my grandma house. My mama seen me. She was like, gay, 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 gay. <laughs> I was like, I was like, damn, damn, we can't get no break. So we was, we was, we was moving from there, right then and there. What, what grade was all this stuff happening or what age was this? I was 17. Okay. I was like hitting my prime. Did you think this was going to be the reaction from your parents? My mom maybe, but mom. My dad at the time, I guess, he didn't really say nothing too much. He was the first to accept it, though. Um, so when he found out, he was like, he asked me in some weird way, like uh, the, another girl was in the car with me. Because I denied it. You know, when that whole situation went down, I was like, we're not gay, we're just best friends, blah, blah, blah. So I denied that, you know. So when we moved out, I was just like, you're not going to kick my best friend out. She has nowhere to go. I'm going to move with her, blah, blah, blah. But I was really in a relationship with this girl. So my dad... My dad was, I was in the car, I was like, hey, can you drop this girl off for me? He goes to drop this girl. He's like, I got a question for you. Is this your girlfriend? And he points right at the girl. And I'm like, yep. He was like, hold it. We'll talk about it later. So, you know, my dad's reaction was okay. My mom, I didn't believe, I didn't think she was going to react the way she did. But now she's, she's amazing. The, the most amazing mother ever. What about grandma? Oh, my grandma was accepted. Both of them. It was like. But she didn't at first. My grandma? Yeah. My grandma, she she was not like she didn't, except to like get out, you know. Because when you tried to go to her house, she was like. No, nah, that was my mom. Oh, that was your mom. <laughs> my you mom did oh. that shit. Oh, okay. Yeah. She was anti-gay. 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 You're, so you so you go to your grandma, you crash at your grandma's place? Yeah, I crashed at my grandma's house. And she was okay with it? She knew what was going on? Yeah, she, at first she was like very hesitant because, you know, that's my mom's mom. But yeah, she she was okay. She knew what was going on. Absolutely. I think. I hope so. How were you growing up, though? You Were you like... Okay, you had feelings for girls, you suppressed them. How were you dressing, though? Were you tomboyish type yeah. vibes? Tomboyish. That's why I didn't win best dress, um, because I didn't wear heels. Yeah, so they, I didn't win best dress, but I was like, so I had a job at Foot Locker, you know? I was like, oh, so shit. So I had every sneaker, any sneaker, any time it dropped, I had it. And I was fresh. Like, I was fresh in a more tomboyish way. I guess I should have been able to know, but I didn't know. That would have saved me so much time. Was your parents trying to get you to dress feminine or be like in heels and makeup and stuff like that? Or they just let you be how you be? My mom did. My mom and my grandma and them, they, they definitely tried to. Um, but that's just not, that wasn't me. I just, I'm, I was team natural at the time. I'm still team natural to this day, but like, it's, uh, Nah, like, yeah, I wasn't on that. They definitely tried, though. They tried. Sounds like you grew up in a two-parent household. Mm. No, they love no? each other. Yeah, you know, what goes on behind closed doors, you don't never know. So I really, as a child, I mean, I had both my mama and my dad, but my, 
I mean, they time zones is real fucked up. Like, my dad would go to work at night from 5 to, like, 3 in the morning. My mom worked at 7 to 5. So where was the time they got to spend together is, except on the weekends. But you were under the same household. I mean, oh, it's yeah, a two-parent yeah. household. Yeah, 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 yeah. My bad, You're not my bad. Uh, spending one weekend with one parent and yeah. another weekend with another parent, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So they never got divorced. Never. Or separated. Never. Okay. Tried. That wasn't happening. <laughs> So with the two-parent household, um, they trying to get you to be feminine. You, you, I mean, wear feminine stuff, that sort of thing, but you're in the tomboy vibes. They didn't suspect you. They didn't think this was starting to happen, you into the same sex or you be being gay. They didn't. Maybe they did because it was a lot of things that, you know, my, my mom would tell me, like, we're crazy stuff while we're driving. And she would say, like, make little, like, remarks, smart little remarks here and there, you know. And she was very supportive of me being in relationships with, with my boyfriend, I guess, at the time. Mm. I dated boys for a long time. So um, and when I say long time, I mean I dated them for a long period. So I dated one boy long time, like four years, you know what I'm saying? And my second boyfriend was, like, three years, you know. These were genuine feelings for boys? Uh-uh. I mean, yeah, I, love is love, you know, so you, you would love somebody without intimate feelings, so it wasn't, like, really none of that so going on, so it was like, and I can't be loved because now I know what love is, and, yeah, that wasn't love. That was puppy love, yeah, puppy love. But you had general feelings for the opposite sex growing up. I mean, genuine feelings, I should like, say. Like, like it wasn't a cover-up. You weren't dating a, a guy oh, no. just so you can impress your parents while really you had secret feelings for or suppressed course, feelings. Girl. Yeah, yeah. no, nah, only like towards the, like my last relation, last boy relationship was I having him as a cover-up just because I, I, I wanted my mom to love me the same way. But, you know, she loved me regardless. It's just she was stuck in her ways, just didn't understand why I was, that this was something I really, this was like a lifestyle change. It wasn't no phase, I guess. Okay, so you had feelings for girls when you were, like, uh, really young. Yeah. But when did you feel like you're gay, this is the same sex feeling, this is it? When I was 17. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, once I made the choice, I made the choice. You know, I, I went through, like, one year where I, w I was like, okay, I'm going to be godly, but I guess, you know, that changed. Like, God is what I, you know, God is the air that we breathe you know now i'm just you know it's different now so yeah 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 different. Mm. have you been sexual with a boy before ha what is sexual what is it i'm asking sexual you. yeah i, mean, I know what the meaning of sexual oh, have means. you done sexual things whether it's oral or intercourse with would you a, say foreplay like kissing yeah, for, and shit uh, like oh, that okay. Like in an intimate se situation. Okay, so intimate, but not like oral sex, not sexual intercourse. Oh hell intercourse. no, no oral sex and shit like that. Like never done I've, that. I've, with... Yeah, I lost my virginity. Yeah, I did. So you, yeah. So you you lost your virginity to uh, a guy. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, when the actual, because uh, you never came out to your parents, they found out. Yeah. Through Facebook. Did you, when you made this decision, and because you said you, you made a choice, uh, were you eventually going to come out to them? Did you have plans maybe at 17 to come out, or were you afraid of being disowned by them? Yeah, I was, I was definitely afraid, afraid of the, what would happen. So my, um, when that all went down, I was under the name Billy CEO, and pictures we were putting on there, you feel me? Or crazy pictures, like weird pictures, like kissing on a bus and stuff like that. So, yeah, when they saw that, it popped. But no, I was never going to, I was never going to say anything at that moment. Not at that age. Maybe as I got older, probably, you know, we slowly put them onto it. But not nah, at that time. I was focused on making sure both parties were neutral. Like it was a neutral. Thing. It was all under the cover with her. She was cool with it. She was straight. She was straight. Your parents were on social media? Like, how did they even <laughs> I know, right? get to that page? Let me tell you, man. This girl 
freaking left her Facebook logged in on my mom and dad's computer, which was ah. in their freaking room. So they open up the the browser, and the first thing they see is Facebook, and then here's our picture, and then here's me commenting on that picture. It was a very fucked up situation because the way they came at me was so like, oh, uh, it was like, you caught you catching me off guard. I don't even know. I can't even lie this quick. I don't even know what to say. Like I don't know what you saw, you know. And I wanted to keep the situation very as mu as calm as I could because I still wanted to live there. I still wanted her to live with me. So it was like, it was it was something that had to happen though. Yeah, it had to happen. Was your family very religious? You talked about being godly at one point. Yeah, very religious. Very, very, very religious. Were there any other gay family members? Oh, yeah. We got a couple of them. That's why when I said, you know, earlier, I was like, my mom, she used to say, like, like real slick remarks sometimes. Mm. She said something about one of my family members, and when she said it, she was like, you know, if, like, don't take this and hear this. You know, anybody that hear this, don't take this and think my mom's a horrible person because she's not. You feel me? My mom's amazing. But there's some things you are taught all your life and then it changes like this and then, you know, it's right there in front of your eyes and you don't know how to accept it. So she didn't accept it at first. And she said to me, she was like, I love your cousin. There's nothing wrong with her. I said, she was like, but if you were gay, I'll disown you. She said that and I was like, oh, shit. Mm. It's never going to happen. I'm never going to be gay. Did you ever try to confide with those other gay family members? Nah, I ain't never tell. I didn't tell them. They found out when everybody found out. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't like, oh, oh, let's let's talk about our. Nah. Why not? I don't know. And, and the thing about it is, like, we was really close back in the days. That's one of the cousins I was telling you about, though. Feel me? So yeah, like we was really close back in the days. But things happen, you know. You go your separate ways. We ain't never. I ain't never. Nah, maybe it's honestly to more more of my straight boy cousins, you know, I've told them to. I told them quick more sooner than I told anybody, you know. Mm. They were accepting. Okay, so you go crash at your grandma's. Take us back to that point. When did they finally because you said your dad was kind of okay with it at first, but your mom, how did she eventually get over this? How did she how did you mend things? How did it gets to this point because you said you sounds like you have a great relationship with your mom now. So yeah. How did you get to that point from well, being had, almost disowned to being I feel you, very like, close? My mom, sorry to cut you off, but my mom, you know, we always had a good relationship. So, you know, we, we always had like that best friend type of relationship. When I broke my heart at 16, I cried on my mom's shoulder. My mom cried with me type shit, you know? So... When when everything transpired, it was like it was like okay, so that happened. That situation happened. You know, it was big. I dated other people. The people I dated, she ain't like none of them. And then I met the girl I'm with now, and my mom just, I guess she see the good in this person. I guess she felt the bad spirits that these other people had, or whatever. You know, like I said, my mom is very religious, very spiritual. I come from a spiritual background, so. I guess she, she just didn't like their energy, the, the vibe that they were giving. I guess it was bad vibes, and I guess that's probably why she didn't accept them. But overall, she accepts the person I'm with now, and this is the person like I truly, truly fuck with. So how long did it take for her to be cool with this? I would say... 17, this is when all this stuff was crumbling. Like 21? Two, three years? Yeah. Four years? Like close to that, four years, about four years. So, did, I mean, was it just awkward a bit between you and your mom? Like, were you guys like on not talking terms? Were you like banished from the house? Were you talking to your dad and not your mom? Did your dad try to ease your mom with yeah, this stuff? Exactly how you're saying it. To be honest with you, it was like not talking to my mom at all. Like, like not talking to my mom. Like. And you go from being buddy, buddy, always talking to this person all the time, confiding in this person, telling them your secrets, because this was, my, me and my mom were really close. 
And, you know, it changed everything because, you know, I would call her and, and tell her a new song that I wrote. You know, it was, it was that type of relationship we had. So not having that communication, that shit hurt my heart. That shit hurt deep, you know, it was real deep. And my dad, yes, he did try to ease the situation. My grandma, they all tried to ease the situation um, with her. And finally, you know, I guess I introduced her. Like, I'm surprised how she even accepted my girl the first day she met her. Because I, I was like, oh, this is my girl. My mom was like, hi, nice to meet you. And I'm like, what? You were just like gay, 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 gay to hi. You're so beautiful, you could be a model. So she, it was like overnight, day and night, you know, my mom just changed. And I guess maybe she prayed on it. Maybe that's what helped her, you know? Maybe she prayed on it and said, what can I do? And maybe God was like, accept her. Boom, simple as that. And she genuinely accepts everything? It's yes. not like a forced, fake thing? No, like she genuinely accepts that. Like, she accepts it, like, she literally, like, I can be on the phone and I could say, like, babe, this, or I love you. My mom used to cringe. That was, like, stuff she cringed about because she knew I was talking to a girl. So she, like, really, truly accepts it, like, calls my, my girl, my girl. Like, if my girl wants to talk to my mom, she texts my mom and my mom responds. And, like, they have each other number. It's, she can't get in touch with me on my phone. She calling her phone. You know, before my mom would avoid stuff like that. Mm. And even when I was in, when she, you know, we got back on speaking terms, because we got back on speaking terms, and I met my girl a year, a year later, so we got back on speaking terms, and, and my mom, at that time, she was like, still a little bit distant, didn't want to see me because she seen my parents. My parents was a little shocking to her, so, yeah. She's cool now. What about the other gay family members um, when they found out the news that you were gay? And did they? They loved that shit. They loved it. I was curious on their reaction. They loved it. They, like, cuz, I always knew you was going to be like that, cuz. I'm like, all right, cuz, how you always knew? If you knew that, why'd you didn't, why you didn't save me time and explain it to me? Like, you, you could tell the future, bro. How you telling the future type shit? So, yeah, they was they was very accepting. Like, they were like, why you ain't tell me? Like, cuz, but all of that, sometimes it just, especially my cousin is like a dyke. My cousins that I'm talking about, these, these females, okay, so some people don't like being called dykes or studs, whatever you may call them. You know what I'm saying? So they more of the, the dominant ones. So I ain't going to introduce you to my girl and my girl look better than your girl type shit. And you try to. Look at my girl some type of way. Hell no. You got me fucked up. We're not trying to beef over no bitch. Now, um, it must feel good for everybody to be on the same page. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, there was one point where there was total opposite. Absolutely, bro. That shit was crazy, too. Somebody watching this, maybe they can relate with your story some sort of way. Any, because circumstances could be different for everybody, but any advice to somebody watching this can relate to you some sort of way. I mean, we talked about different variations and varieties of the story and how everything unfolded, but if they could, you know, relate to you some sort of way, um, just with everything we have discussed thus far, is there any advice you have to somebody maybe gay out there? Yeah, like, it does not matter. At the end of the day, what anyone thinks but yourself so first thing first accept yourself if this is what you want to do this is who you are even if you buy if it, whatever you are whatever situation you accept yourself for who you are and don't let anybody determine who you can like and who, who you can love you know if it makes you happy be happy Now, just curious, because you did mention bi, um, how did you know you weren't bi or had feelings for both, and it was just feelings for the same sex? So, remember how I told you, you know, I had I lost my virginity to a guy. I don't like penetra penetration. Ah. Period. Don't like the feeling. 
don't like that shit. Yeah, so don't even... That shit like, like an alien down there. Maybe because I have been with myself a lot. You know, I didn't have sex right out the gate when I was youngin', so it was like first time, sorry. It's not cutting it for me. Mm. Is it an intuition feeling too? Yeah, definitely. It's a vibe, you know? But there's some boys, I can't. I ain't even gonna lie, like, you gotta remember, like, you know, a relationship is like what you make it. You don't have to, it don't have to be sexual, you know? I got homeboys that I truly love. You feel me? Like, I love, like, I love a person I've been in a relationship with. And they my homeboys. There's no, no sexual feelings whatsoever, but they vibe is like, Dude, like, your energy is, like, everything type shit. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I got homeboys. I, I freaking love, you know what I'm saying? But it ain't none of that going on. But So, yeah, it's an intuition. It is an intuition. I know who I want to be with based off of meeting them. I can see them first the first day. I'm, like I said, I'm Aquarius, bro. And I use that strongly because I'm born the day before Valentine's Day. It's like I attract love. The first day I meet a person, we're together. Period. First day. First time we talk, we together. Now, you were 17 when all this was happening. Uh, was this a distraction while you were in school? Were you able to finish and graduate high school or did I was, you drop I, out? No, no, no. I was able to finish. You mean as far as like this? Well, all this unfolded when you were 17. Yeah. I was out of school by then. Oh, you had already yeah. finished school when yeah. all this happened? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought this happened maybe while you were going to school. No, no. When it came to the music side of things, because um, you talked about being music when you were young, do you remember what age or what grade you started being involved in music? I started in um, kindergarten talent shows, so I was six. How did you do in town? I mean, we saw how you did in a contest um, in Mexico, but how did you do in town? Did you do a lot of talent shows? Were you? Yeah, I did. A, I did a lot of talent shows when it when it involved like my school. Um, probably like elementary, throughout elementary, till I was like in the, in the third grade, I was doing talent shows. And then after that, um, I started writing my own music. And then further on, like middle school, I started going, opening for a lot of different artists. Did you battle classmates? Like, oh, cause yeah. you, you sing and you rap. Did you battle, like, were you into stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, cyphers, yeah. Like battle rapping, yeah. That was like an everyday thing. I, honestly, I used to skip skip class to go to to battle raps and, and to play tump win more lose more break even with battles yeah um battle wise it, i was the only girl doing it so it was like nobody in my in my like my category so the dudes would never like battle me one-on-one -on -one, but they let me rap so like yeah i'll rap and i'll freestyle here and there and there you know i was that i was like the the queen of rap at my school. Everywhere I went, each school I went to, I was that that bitch. Ever perform at pep rallies? Oh yeah, I open. I open for a pep rally. I host the pep rallies. We're talking about while you were attending that school, you performed in their pep rally, or yeah. is this after? I hosted pep rallies. Graduating and you're performing at pep nah, rallies. No, while I was going to the school. No, nah, I never did uh, pep rally pep pep, the pep rallies after high school. Nah. Perform like a song that you had or at the time, that type of thing? I was hosting it. And oh, yes, hosting it. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did um, I did uh, songs that were very kid friendly at that time, or I guess, uh, you know, young adult friendly at that time. So yeah, yeah, I did uh, my music. And then I was very, everybody knew I did music. I, I literally, most of my high school, probably half of the time I was not in class. I did a lot of my work you know, at, on the road with my father, you know what I'm saying? And I had to bring that work in too. So my teachers and them knew what I was going going for and they really, I guess me as a person, I guess they liked me and they, they supported that and they allowed me to do that. But I missed, I missed like 181 days, like a year. And that's like almost damn near the whole year. I was there like every once in a while with cards and my fucking MySpace at the time and Facebook was like freaking popping. So got a lot of a lot of friends that way I guess 